Full disclosure, I'm a cisgender heterosexual who has worn women's clothes in the past and likely will again. Now let's talk about Bayonetta's sexuality. Although I've taken a sex and gender class or two back in the day, I lack the knowledge to talk about this subject with the depth it deserves, so I'll tackle it in brief digestible points for the internet that'll be broken up by heart wipes. Let's look at two reviews of Bayonetta 2, each one holding a different view regarding Bayonetta's sexuality. The first one is from GameTrailers.com, written by Ben Moore. She exudes confidence with a commanding authority. Sure, her clothes often disappear and there is the occasional close-up of her crotch or breasts, but it happens for a reason. Bayonetta is not only completely satisfied with who she is, she flaunts it in such an empowering way, using sexuality to humiliate her enemies and flipping the script on what we typically see. Every single moment, Bayonetta is in total control, never following the whims of anyone else or seeking approval. When she says fuck off after a combo, the words have bite. The second is from Polygon, written by Arthur Geis. Here are some bits from the review. It's the kind of game that left me asking how many times and how many different ways developer Platinum could run a camera up the main character's spread legs and cleavage. It has the same exaggerated sexualization that hung heavy around the last game's neck. I'll forgive the high heels and the exaggerated proportions, if only because there's so many other things to criticize. The game's camera, which zooms in on Bayonetta's parts like their products being sold in a commercial. There are enough gratuitous ass shots, cleavage jokes, and spread legs to fill an hours long supercut. The camera doesn't look at Bayonetta, it leers at her. This is frequently provided as an implicit reward for doing well. Bayonetta's strongest attacks result in her clothes flying off. It's sexist, gross pandering, and it's totally unnecessary. The deliberate sexualization and objectification on display serves as a jarring distraction from the creativity and design smarts elsewhere. Both reviews make valid statements. My personal leanings regarding Bayonetta's sexuality are towards the former review, the one from Game Trailers. I think Bayonetta is a character comfortable with her body and with her sexuality, and she is empowered in the situation she's in. The Polygon review seems so distracted by sexuality, the subject takes up almost a third of the review. It's so staunch on its stance of disgust at Bayonetta's sexuality that it reads as insincere. The review comes off as trying too hard to compensate for how terrible humanity has been towards females. It comes off as white knighting. Personally, it reminds me of those guys we've all met or overheard in one witch time or another. They're nice guys. They're nice to women. They talk about women like they've never looked at an image of a woman for the purposes of sexual pleasure. But then they're the same guy who complains about being in the friend zone. I'm always there for her. She should be with me. Hey, come on guys. She's free to do what she wants. Human relationships aren't a barter system. She doesn't owe you anything. Ahem. <clears throat> uh... Anyways, Bayonetta is a great franchise and the gameplay is rewarding. Satisfying gameplay is at the heart of Bayonetta. Sexuality is only a part of it, a part that doesn't take away from the play experience that's at its core. That's why I feel the Game Trailers review covered Bayonetta 2's sexuality better than Polygon. The sexuality works thematically in Bayonetta. The two most physically intimate things someone can do with another person is fight and fuck. As someone who has boxed and boinked, not at the same time. They produce a similar thrill. They are acts that are physical and visceral. They are acts that demand a deep understanding of your partner, their body, their mind, the rhythm between you two. The word climax gets tossed around in Bayonetta. The flow of combat is punctuated by a big combo finishers. It's twofold, sex and combat, as the finisher is a massive, powerful attack while Bayonetta flaunts her body. Bayonetta marries the combat and the sexuality into a single entity. Bayonetta's body is an exaggeration of not just the female form, but the human form in general. Bayonetta has abnormally long limbs in order for the animations she does to work, to look normal. I'm pretty sure there's a blog post on the Platinum Games website explaining all this. Go look it up for yourselves, I'm, I don't have to footnote this, I'm, this isn't an essay. Fun fact, Mari Shimazaki, Bayonetta's character designer, is a woman. So is she a sexist, is she under the thumb of her sexist masters? Or is she a woman who has embraced female sexuality and understands a woman can be sexy and powerful? Hideki Kamiya, Bayonetta's creator and director of the first game, got upset about the pornographic doujinshi, fan comics, that came out about Bayonetta. Here's a translation of his tweet. It seems there's erotic doujinshi based off Bayonetta. 
There are fans who will resent that, and I hardly think those responsible hold any love for the game. Jean-Pierre Kellums, a producer at Platinum Games, wrote an editorial a couple of years ago on 1UP.com about mainstream gaming and the male gaze. I'd link it, but it doesn't seem to exist anymore as 1UP is kinda defunct. I don't know, tweet them to repost it or something? This is a brief aside, but still related, I guess. It's totally fucked up that Anita Sarkeesian gets death threats. We need to be better than this. The gaming community needs to be better than this. Humanity needs to be better than this. This is the Western world, not fucking ISIS and their warped Sharia. Women have voices, and they should be able to express themselves freely without threat of violence. So I guess here's the wrap-up. Bayonetta sexuality. Okay? Yes. Problematic? Still yes. Although I still find Bayonetta less sexist than the Tomb Raider reboot and how one of the producers talked about how the player will want to protect Lara and some of the other stuff going on with that game. 